there at the SKU day. Well, right now we can get some analysis from Marcus Papadopoulos. He's the editor of Politics First uh, magazine and an expert on Russia and uh, the Balkans. Marcus, thank you so much for joining us here on RT International. Well, um, as we just heard from our correspondent earlier from President Putin, uh, his predictions for the end of uh, the current economic crisis in uh, Russia seem somewhat optimistic. Two years, he says, it will take for the economy to rebound. What do you think? How realistic is that? Well, President Putin made it very clear that the Russian economy is facing serious economic uh, challenges. And those uh, challenges have been brought about by the uh, Western imposed sanctions, which have been imposed for geostrategic reasons, namely to weaken Russia, to devastate the Russian economy in order to preserve Western political dominance. But at the same time, President Putin made it clear that the, Rus the Russian economy is not the Russian economy of the 1990s. The Russian economy today, it is strong. It has become integrated in the global economy, both in an energy sphere, a defense sphere, natural uh, resources sphere. So yes, these are tough times for the Russian economy, but undoubtedly the Russian economy, it can withstand it and it can prevail um, the Western imposed sanctions. Well, um, you know, what's uh, I think significant here is that will the West get the message from President Putin? I mean, he uh, blamed NATO's expansion in the East for the cooling of relations between Russia and the West. Mm. And uh, mm. Putin also said that it's time now to stop building walls. So um, how will this go down with the West? Well, the West is 110% responsible for the crisis in Ukraine. In the last 20 years, the West has been seeking to isolate Russia on its western borders by bringing in states from Eastern Europe and the Baltic states into the European Union and into NATO to try and weaken Russia and Europe and thereby in the world. So President Putin is absolutely right. The West is responsible for the crisis in Ukraine. They instigated the coup this February, which resulted in a democratically elected president, and I emphasize a democratically elected president, overthrown and a pro-Western government brought to power. And that pro-Western government started targeting the millions upon millions of the Russian-speaking community in Ukraine, principally in the south and the eastern part. So the West is responsible for the crisis in Ukraine, as is the West is responsible for the crisis in Syria. The West is attempting to preserve its, its uh, political and economical dominance in the world, and it's at Russia's expense. Well, you know, during this uh, Q&A, uh, uh, there was a question and remark from a Ukrainian journalist who blamed uh, Russia for carrying out an <clears throat> anti-terror operation uh, in eastern Ukraine, and uh, uh, Russian president, in, in answering that, said that uh, you once again, in fact, stressed that Russia is uh, uh, ready to be a mediator between Kiev and the east. But um, can we expect any cooperation or any reaction uh, uh, from Kiev to this? Well, uh, in Kiev now, there is a pro-Western government. It is a puppet of Washington. It is a puppet of Brussels. Russia has a very important interest in Ukraine. There are millions of Russian-speaking people in Ukraine. And Ukraine and Russia are tied to each other historically, culturally, linguistically, politically, economically, militarily. So Russia has every right. It is completely reasonable for Russia to try and make sure that a stable solution arises in Ukraine. But ultimately, the ball is in the court of the West. And I don't say the ball is in the court of Kiev, because Kiev is just a puppet. If the Americans and the Europeans want uh, peace to come to Ukraine, then they can do it. But that's not going to happen, because the Americans have already indicated that they're going to start supplying military equipment to the Ukrainian military to keep on prosecuting a brutal war in eastern Ukraine. And much of that equipment is going to be going to Ukrainian paramilitaries, which which are composed of neo-Nazi groups. So these are very, very worrying days, not just for Ukraine, but for the whole of Europe. Russia has been trying to mediate in Ukraine, and they brought both sides to the table uh, in, in Minsk a few months ago. But ultimately, the Americans are pushing ahead with trying to bring Ukraine into the West's orbit, into the European Union, and, and, uh, and more importantly, into NATO. And the Americans will not cease in their efforts 
to completely enclose Russia on its western borders. All one has to do is take out a map of modern-day Europe. From the Baltic to the Black Sea, Russia is encircled by European Union and NATO member states, with the exception of Ukraine. And the Americans know if they bring Ukraine into the European Union and into NATO, then Russia will be completely isolated on its western borders. Well, Marcus, before we let you go, uh, Putin also said that economic crisis is not a pay for Crimea. Um, what do you think? I mean, to what extent do you agree or disagree? And what are your thoughts on this one? I completely agree with President Putin. One of the most positive aspects of 2014 is that the Crimea was reunited with Russia. A historical wrong was remedied. But what did anyone expect Russia to do after some repugnant people came to power in Kiev following the coup this February? They were talking about banning the Russian language. We saw Russian historical monuments destroyed. We saw, um, we saw World War II monuments destroyed. By neo-Nazi groups, anti-Semitic groups, neo-fascist groups. It was inevitable that the people of the Crimea, who have always wanted to be with Russia, they would be targeted by Kiev. So therefore, they held a referendum. The vast majority, the overwhelming majority, voted to reunite, and I emphasize that word, reunite with Russia, with the motherland. That's what they did. That's what they wanted to uh, be a part of, and Russia had every single obligation to recognize that and to bring Ukraine back. So anyone that argues that uh, Crimea is uh, responsible for, e for Russia's economic woes is quite frankly ignorant. The West is using it as a pretext. If it wasn't the Crimea, the West would have found another reason. What the sanctions are all about is weakening the Russian economy, devastating the Russian economy. That's so therefore, the American dominance in the world the Western dominance in the world will not be uh, threatened by Russia. The fear is that Russia in 2014 is not the Russia of the 1990s, and therefore they're trying to cripple Russia, and they will not succeed, and history shows they will not succeed, because Russia has been faced by numerous threats over hundreds of years, from Charles XII of Sweden to Napoleon Bonaparte to Adolf Hitler, and if those people fail to subdue Russia, the West and its sanctions will not never achieve that. Well, Marcus, thanks so much for your views. And also, just before you let it go, the Ukrainian government also doesn't support the premise that this current situation has been caused by the neo-Nazis. But for now, thanks so much for uh, talking uh, to us and uh, letting us know your thoughts on this. I just want to remind our viewers uh, who maybe just uh, uh, watch, turning on uh, the TV screens to watch us that uh, we'll be going back to Vladimir Putin's Q&A throughout the day and uh, we'll be bringing you highlights. We have a correspondent there on the ground. In the meantime, they can watch the live stream on our website, rt.com.